May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we rejoice today as Franciscans in this magnificent solemnity of the Seraphic Father, Saint Francis, the founder of our order way back in the medieval times. We today unpack the mystery of this great figure of the church, this great apex of sanctity. Is he who, as the world thinks now, a man stripped out of supernatural neutrality? Or is he a great saint of the Catholic Church? One famous saint way back in the 17th century in France, Saint Mary Margaret Alacoque, we know who received the revelations regarding the Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ, our Savior, asked which saint then was the closest to his heart. The answer she was given then was Saint Francis. Saint Francis of Assisi and Saint Bonaventure, both in the 13th century, had a great, a great devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ. Remember, this is the time when, through the mendicant orders and the Franciscans, we had a turn back to the adoration of the humanity of Christ. In fact, St. Francis of Assisi was for St. Margaret Mary's. She was, he was her sole guide for her apostolic work. She wrote, after I had seen all this, the divine bridegroom, as a token of his love, gave me Saint Francis as my soul's guide. He was to lead me through all the pains and sufferings that awaited me. Who then, we can ask today, is the real Saint Francis? The real Saint Francis was consumed with ever-increasing love for the highest and the greatest good. In the beauty of all things, says St. Bonaventure, he saw the author of all beauty and followed in the footsteps of his beloved who had imprinted his image on all created things. In the world, they say, St. Francis is the lover of animals and trees and ecology, but in the sense that these are gifts from God. He saw God then in creation but his heart did not cling to these things, rather to the author of all that is useful, good, and beautiful. In other words, Francis loved animals and nature not as an end to themselves, but as they sang the praises of the almighty author. Like St. Francis, we must imitate then the virtues and the examples of Jesus Christ and our Blessed Mother. This is what makes the saints Individual saints have tried to imitate specific virtues of Christ, but Francis, in his magnificence, tried to live out his whole life imitating every step in all the virtues of Christ. He took the good news of the gospel to heart and lived accordingly, even to the point of conforming himself to Christ crucified in the stigmata. The stigmata, which is a contradiction of our times and the times that tries to glorify science, cannot find any natural or scientific causes for such a supernatural stigmata. And as in the case of St. Padre Pio, it is rejected in these times. We can see then the confirmation to Jesus by considering many episodes in the life of St. Francis. He too was born in a stable and would later be the one to start the devotion of the Holy Crib in Bethlehem. He knew well that every Franciscan must be born in Bethlehem and die at Calvary. St. Francis then gives up his wealth for the sake of holy poverty, as Jesus Christ gave up his divinity for the sake of his poor humanity. St. Francis takes up his abode at St. Mary of the Angels as Jesus Christ took up his dwelling in the Virgin-made church in Our Lady, in her very womb. The Franciscan order then 
was conceived in the womb of Mary, who became the mother superior and the advocate of all Franciscan religious throughout time. This is why then we are Marian Franciscans living here in St. Joseph's, Portsmouth, because we belong to the Virgin Mary. Francis becomes then dependent on the providence of Mary, who is the channel of all graces. He finds himself at the beginning then with 12 companions as Jesus Christ gathered around him 12 apostles. Francis became a living crucifix, a living crucifix on image carved in human flesh. Look at the way then our Holy Father, St. Francis, passed away from this life. He foresaw even the date of his death. Died at St. Mary of the Angels with Mary at his side as Jesus Christ at Calvary. His habit was removed as was the clothing of the Savior. Jesus, as he was dying at the foot of the cross, placed his children under the care of Mary as St. Francis placed the whole order under the protection of the same lady at the Portuncula. Is he not then St. Francis, our living model, to imitate uh, since the Blessed Virgin Mary, see, since he so closely resembled Christ? For St. Francis, the Blessed Virgin Mary then was the mother and the advocate and the queen. St. Bonaventure tells us that St. Francis honored her as mother when he says he loved her with unspeakable affection, the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, for as much as she, she had made the Lord of glory our brother, and that through her we have obtained mercy. Remember, the mother is the mother of mercy. St. Francis then was the first to be exalted in his humility with the gifts of the five in Prince of the Wounds of Christ on his body, the Holy Stigmata. It was on or about the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, the 14th of September in the year 1224, when prying on the mountainside that he beheld this marvelous vision of the seraph. As a sequel of which there appeared on his body the visible marks of the five wounds of the crucified, which says an earlier writer had long been since impressed even in his heart. In another vision of one of the brothers, Pacificus, he reported, and while he was absorbed in prayer, he was lifted up in the spirit and wrapped into heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, God alone knoweth, and he saw in heaven very many seats, very many seats in one amongst them was raised above the others, glorious to be held, adorned with splendor and with many precious stones, so that he marveled at its great beauty and wondered even whose this seat could be. And he heard a voice that said, this was the seat of Lucifer. This was the seat of Lucifer, and his place will be, in his place will be seated the humble Francis. No wonder the order of the Immaculate, the Franciscans, are detested so much by the devil and his followers. Remember also two years ago in the year 2019, we celebrated the 800th anniversary of the meeting of the Sultan of Egypt during the Fifth Crusade with St. Francis. The poor Christian monk sought an audience with his great Muslim leader, Al-Malik, Al Kamil in 1219. What was the purpose of this meeting then? This can also enlighten us as to who the real St. Francis is. What was the purpose of this meeting? The truth then is that St. Francis' purpose was to evangelize the Muslims, Islam. He was inspired by God to preach the gospel to the Sultan. He boldly, bravely, and unapologetically proposed the truths of the Catholic faith to the Sultan at the great personal risk to himself. Saint Francis had a great desire for martyrdom. He did not dialogue with the Sultan with the limited aim of improving mutual, mutual understanding, 
as we see in this relativism of today, but he wanted to save the Sultan's soul by offering him the good news or to die a martyr's death trying. In the age of St. Francis, we see the apex and the heights of Christendom when Jesus Christ reigned in society and hearts. Francis was sent to rebuild the church, but when there is manifest a great light, there always exists an evil opposite. Just as this humble soul was sent to rebuild and hold up the Catholic Church, ironically, another proud English Franciscan called William of Ockham was sent to knock down the church. His turn, his was the turn towards something called nominalism, the denial of objective reality. His disciple was no other than Martin Luther. So who is the real Saint Francis? Today, the world tries to strip out the supernatural content of this great saint. They say he started the Franciscans not wanting even to be under the umbrella of the Catholic Church, which is complete nonsense. We know that St. Francis had an unwritten rule, 1209, and the rule was finally written with the approval of the church in 1223. Also, St. Francis wrote a letter one time in the Franciscan sources to St. Anthony. As the world now says that Francis' idea was not uh, for the Franciscans to be intellectual, but in the letter he says to St. Anthony, he says that he, has, he is happy for St. Anthony to follow his intellectual studies, but the studies are not an end unto themselves. They have to be imbued with the spirit of prayer, imbued with the spirit of prayer. Francis then felt a strong attachment to the poor because he saw the poverty of Christ in them. One of the great criticizers of St. Francis in his holy life was a French Calvinist priest called Paul Sabatier, who wanted to form a rift between Francis and his disloyal followers, he said between Francis and the institution of the church. Why? Because he wanted that the friars, as simple, uneducated, and living apart from the Catholic hierarchy in such a way as way not to be able to hold up and support the church. With St. Francis and his followers then, in this way of the world excommunicated, then the walls of the church would crumble, and the monster of modernism will enter into the scene. Is This is what we have beheld. So Francis, as we said, saw the poverty of Christ in the poor. He always beheld Christ in poverty from the crib to the cross. He longed for the greatest poverty. He wanted then to be stripped bare, that he might find Jesus Christ and call him his own in the words, my God and my all. He thus sought the poverty of the grotto of Bethlehem and Golgotha in order to humble himself as Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary. The great insight and novelty of St. Francis was thus to seek then poverty, lady poverty, personified in Our Lady as a poverty not just for individual, for the friars, but poverty in common. The mission of the Franciscans was to rebuild the church in medieval times. It is the same mission today. Never has there been a period with such a deluge of sin covering the world. We need the Lord of hosts then to send holy Franciscan vocations who are attracted to this holy poverty and a life of penance. We need to be humble in heart like St. Francis and listen to the words of the gospel today. Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. Take upon my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. Let us then make our own the holy prayer of St. Francis, my God and my all. His concern for the salvation of all souls was central 
to his life. As members of the mystical body of Christ, we are all complete. We are all called to complete what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ and share in his redemptive work. For as Jesus Christ said, where I am there shall my servant be also. Let us renounce then all sin, the devil and the world. Let us renounce our own ego, the greatest abomination of desolation, our own ego. Let us be with the real Saint Francis, the beautiful and sublime imitator of Jesus Christ, our brother, as we honor him, Saint Francis, on his solemnity, so that one day we may thank Almighty God for eternity, for the gift of the Franciscan order. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.